What is an algorithm? An algorithm is a set of instructions followed by a computer where specific inputs are used to produce an output. Algorithms are found everywhere nowadays, including music creation and production. They can be used to generate playlists of your most listened to tracks or suggest new music you might enjoy. In Ableton Live, algorithms are used while making arpeggios. A sequence of notes can be inputted and transformed by an algorithm to create a complex melody as an output. Algorithms can vary in complexity. Just like when making arpeggios, the same transformations can be made to a sequence of notes to produce the same sound every time. Or they can use randomization to produce variations on a melody. Algorithms can be used in a positive way in the music industry. You only have to look at SoundCloud. I think the way that SoundCloud suggests music on the back of what you've already listened to is definitely beneficial. I think it matches the music that you listen to and it, and it does introduce new music. I'm very much like the SoundCloud generation, possibly not so much now, but I think that's how I found some of the cool remixes that I then put into my sets or some of the producers that I might not have come across before and played their records on the radio through that, just getting lost. Spotify is a streaming service and the easy way to describe it is it's uh, the Netflix of music. We have some extremely smart people, people that are much smarter than, than probably anyone in this room, um, and they've put together some incredibly detailed software and algorithms that allow us to see how people are consuming music, how they're engaging with music, and how music is spreading from different territories across the globe. Duke Deck is an AI company. We're building an artificial intelligence system that understands the rules of music theory and can use that understanding to write its own music, to help contribute to other people's music, um, and to generally get involved in the music creative process. So I guess I came to music as a computer scientist. Everyone uses software to make music now, but this is sort of going behind the interface, seeing what's underneath, sort of unraveling it. an algorithm do your job? I don't think it could, to be honest. I think an algorithm can suggest you records, but I can tell you, hold on a minute, you might not be sure if you like this record, but just listen, wait for the drop, or wait for you to hear the bass, or wait for the solo, or wait for the ad-libs, and it's that human touch that might keep you listening. I will find music through people actually sending it to me, professional people, so pluggers, A&Rs, managers, I spend a lot of time online, I look at blogs, I look at various kind of streaming services to see what's working on there, what I might have missed on there. So, let me get this straight, Yeah. right? You use code mm. to make music that makes music. Yeah. Music's from the soul. Mm. It's personal experience. If you come in angry, you can make an angry influence song. Yeah. If you're in love, loved up, happy, you make a loved up influence song. Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> well, I guess I'm doing the same, but just going through this extra step through the code. Um, it's like, it's, it's, I guess it's closer to uh, language, right. describing music with language. I mean, you, you do lose a bit of connection with the music. It's a bit hit and miss, and I think, I think that where it gets really emotional is where people add to the music. So AI hasn't got to the stage where, where it can kind of replicate human emotions and that kind of thing, but I think when you bring people into the mix and get them to use algorithms, that's when you really get the kind of, you know, the emotion and all those other brilliant aspects of music that, that we really value. It's impossible for an algorithm to do what I do. I'm hearing things that are fresh out of the studio. I'm hearing things from artists that haven't got managers. I'm hearing things from artists that haven't got record labels. Or I'm hearing things from people with management and record labels that haven't been released yet, that needs to start on that journey, that needs to come from somewhere. And it's impossible for an algorithm to pick up something that hasn't got that history, that, that metadata. I think a really good example of an artist um, that has popped off that probably wouldn't have on an international level even a year ago is Dave. You know, Dave, who's an 18-year-old kid, 
um, had a record called Wanna Know. Uh, we did put that straight away onto one of our human curated playlists and it instantly turned into a top performing record. It was the best performing record. It had the lowest skip rate. It had the highest engagement rate and the save rate was really, really impressive too. So all of those indicators showed us that this record was potentially something that had appeal. Was that before Drake jumps on it? Yeah, that's correct. This was the original. I think you have to look at the fact that there are these huge platforms like Spotify which affect a lot of the way that people listen to music. If something's top of Spotify, then a lot of people are going to listen to that track. AI could learn what's starting to trend, could then move that to the top of a list and could actually sort of encourage that trend to happen. Every single piece of data that is used on Spotify is driven by audience consumption. So we're not leading the algorithm. The algorithm is being led by the consumers at home, on the bus, on the train, etc. Algorithms have become part of how we as creators find and play music to other people. Even if you know the sort of blog culture, for an artist now to get on a blog is very different to the discovery element. So it's all part of like an ecosystem, so I use that word quite a lot, but I definitely think that the algorithm is now part of that ecosystem of music creation. I just think there's a danger when things are politicised. It just depends on whether the algorithm is a natural selection or whether there's some kind of manipulation in the background. Algorithms, yeah. how important are they from your perspective, like in 2017? They're kind of part of what make, makes us human, I think. Thousands of years we've used algorithms. You don't need a computer to make an algorithm. Things are changing because algorithms are coming um, into our social lives um, in ways that they haven't before. But the basis of our algorithm is, is just mathematics and, and yeah, we've always okay. been doing mathematics. Okay. I think being open. You have to be open and be able to adapt with the way that the sort of the, the music industry is moving. I think it's staying curious, staying interested. Our key aim is to make as many creators of music and art live off their art. And that means using our algorithms, using our data and using our world-class curators and try and find ways in which we can serve as much music as possible to as many fans as possible around the globe. I don't think we're going to get to the stage where we only use or listen to music that is made with algorithms. I think algorithms are just one thing that can come into the music creative process. Generally, I think we should be afraid of algorithms. I think that there's some strange things happening at the moment with the control of social media and so on. Don't pretend AI isn't happening, because it is. The future is going to carry on moving at such a speed and rate that I feel like it's going to force us all to be a lot more creative. It's difficult to determine if creativity is affected by algorithms because the only way we can really decide on the creative merit of a piece of music is whether it's good or not. It doesn't matter how it's been created. If it's great, if it's good, if it moves the crowd, if people want to listen to it, if they want to buy it, if they want to stream it, that's all that counts, that's all that matters. People want to listen to what they want to listen to. They like who they like, they play who they want to play. But if there's a mass production of music that doesn't fit either of those criterias, you could definitely say creativity is affected.